you know in a few years these boys will be very important. The Riot Club. The Riot Club? Not just offering you a club. I'm offering you a future. It's our time, gentlemen. We're at the top university in the world. And so are 20,000 other people. But there are no more than 10 in the Riot Club. They don't know when to stop. The inspiration for the Riot Club is, of course, the Bullingdon, or Buller, to its members. Founded in the 1780s at Oxford University, originally devoted to horse racing, but more recently to lavish banquets and the smashing of plates and other breakables. The club's diversity still tends to range from Eton to Eton, and its former members include the men today running London, the country and the economy. I am sick to death of poor people! In the film, the Buller members are portrayed as cravenly immoral thugs and toffs. The least obnoxious is played by Max Irons, son of Jeremy, and I started by asking him whether it wasn't all a bit exaggerated. I thought this can't exist, these people can't exist. But we did our research, and they do. And in fact, I think you took the first draft up to Cambridge. Yeah. And the feedback was, it's not extreme yeah. enough. Yeah. You know, this stuff happens. What does it say about Britain that these sort of dining clubs still exist today? I think that we still live in a worryingly unequal society. Mm -hmm. There are people out there who think that their wealth and their, their class um, give them license to behave however they like, and I think that's kind of the central uh, metaphor of the story, is, the, is these boys uh, believe that because they can afford to pay for the damage, they can do whatever they like. And the fact that three former members of the Bullingdon um, are running um, the Treasury, the country, and the City of London, what does that tell you? Uh, well, I think it tells you that membership of one of these clubs is, is a stepping stone to, to high office. But there's, there's equality in terms of you know, finances and then there's the inequality of class, which this is what this film is really about. Do you think that the kind of visceral inequality of class, the poison of class, is more pronounced now than it was, I don't know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago? Yeah, because I think class and wealth go hand in hand in that, in that respect. Um, and we seem to be living in a world in which um, if you don't have enough money to get you to the places where you, where you need to go, then there isn't enough help available. There's a kind of, um, since the recession, a kind of leeching of, of kindness. Because normally the, the subject of British class is dealt with a sort of benign, rather in a, in a wry way. You know, yeah. I mean, on the other end of the scale, four weddings and a funeral, but there's always a bit of a smirk and a smile, and it's basically, yeah. it's, you know, it's easily digestible. This is different. Yeah. Well, the idea that, um, that the upper classes are, are largely harmless is potentially a dangerous one. Um, and we're used to seeing them in, in that kind of cosy setting. I think I like that this, this film is, is doing something a bit darker. What about you, Max? But you come from that world in a way, don't you? I mean, you're not, you're not a toff, but you did go to a private school and all that, so... I, I mean, did go to a private school, but we're not, we're not attacking people who go to private schools. We're not yeah. attacking people who went to Oxford University. We're attacking a particular set of values. Mm. Very rare to find, but they do exist, and we're, we're pointing the spotlight onto that section of society. In the way the spotlights have been shone onto many mm. places of society many times before. Um, all I hope this film does is, you know, the government should represent the people and all people, not just particular parts of, of society. And I think if it makes us examine the values that were associated, associated by the people who are representing us, then that's good. And, and if, you know, if David Cameron ever sees this film, or Boris Johnson or George Osborne, do you think they would recognise themselves in those characters if they were being honest with themselves? I don't know. They might. It's hard to know what they personally got up to. Um, mm. But apparently he is going to see it, by the way. He, uh, is he going to see it? Our producer, the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, um, our producer has been texting him. They happen to be school friends, and apparently he's quite excited to see it. It's a small world, as you might say, for some.